Hey, hey, here with Easy Jeezy. You see anything shiny? I finally got the case cut. Woohoo! Turned out really good. I'm very pleased. Uh, we'll know at mock up how things line up, but it's uh, second over. So plenty of life left in it, and he did a custom cut on the back. He only went halfway in. Now I get to start fitting and assembling and and trying to decide which combination is going to fit the easiest and the best and come out with the right uh, compression, head spacing. Uh, whew. Now the fun starts. Finally. So you know what I'm going to be doing Easter weekend. I'm, I'm not going to be looking for jelly beans and Easter eggs, that's for sure. It's important to get this crankshaft as clean as possible from this point on. You really need to be concerned about contamination. Uh, I use a lot of paper towels. There might be some uh, pros and cons to anything and everybody's going to have a different preference. When you get this down to bare steel, you want to keep a coating of oil on everything. Uh, I've just washed it in a small paint bucket with some number two diesel fuel and I don't think that's a, <laughs> the best thing in the world to use but it's all I have available. You, you, it's great if you have fancy uh, solvent tanks and stuff but the average guy can come up with something to clean this. Do not use gasoline. Uh, gasoline is just too flammable it's too dangerous. Be safe in whatever that you're choosing and make sure that you have fire extinguishers and a cell phone or something nearby in case the worst case scenario happens and and there's always there's always a di compressed air is a nice thing to have too. Uh, you want to blow things out and, and you want to get it recoated with oil as quick as possible. You don't want this dry metal exposed to the air and oxidation uh, as little as possible. But uh, we're going to get this. Uh, they put a preservative on it so that it doesn't rust. And they put this nice stuff over each and every bearing surface to uh, keep it from getting scratched. And it's, it's wonderful stuff, but you got to make sure that it all comes off because it'll it'll mess up your bearings. Holden Schmidt connecting rod bearings and when you put these bearings in you don't want to just set them in place and then just push down in the middle. You want to get them closed and work them in from the sides. And you don't want to drop your bolts. They have a, a, a white uh, coating to preserve the, the bearing surface and you want to take a clean rag. Be careful on using rags and paper towels. There's just, use your own discretion, but you want to get that coating preservative off and we are going to put it on the crankshaft and we're going to plastic gauge each of these bearings to make sure that they're in specification and that we have the right clearance and the uh, the right setup. So. I'll turn you back on as I prep the rest of these. Uh, you'll need a vise or something with soft jaws. If you put these connecting rods in, they come tight because they size these bearings. Don't mar the sides of these. This is a bearing surface. As it moves back and forth, it could cause you problems on your crankshaft. We're going to have a real good time doing this build. I lost one of the connecting rod bolts already. Did you see where that thing took off? I lifted it up. I found one of them, and you want to make sure those threads don't get dirty. For crying out loud! Barely even started. And I'm going to spend the rest of the night on my hands and knees looking for that friggin' bolt. It got legs and disappeared. I'm going to have to take the video camera in the house, fire it up, and see if I can spot which direction that thing took off because I'm not seeing it. <laughs> this is just too hilarious not to share. I mean, oh my god. I, I don't want to make myself look like a stupid shit on this engine bill. You know, I'd like to make myself look like the real NASCAR pro. But a little bit ago I lifted up my connecting rod and the bolts fell out. 
And I got on my hands and knees with a flashlight, and I started searching around the floor. I turned the camera off, and I found one over here. I have moved everything, shuffled everything around. It's unbelievable. I spent on my hands and knees for 45 fucking for, friggin' minutes looking for that other bolt. <laughs> I, I looked everywhere. I went in and watched the video twice because that's where... I was filming it as I dropped it, right? So I thought, well, maybe I can hear something. And I heard that little metallic click. <laughs> and so I came out. It's like, well, there was one. I mean, I'm looking on the other side of the garage, crawling underneath the car. So I go back in the house, and I watch it a second time. It's like, uh, you know, I would sleep so much better tonight, Father, if you just help me find that bolt. I found it. Guess where it was? Hmm. hmm. You see anything right interesting on the front of this apron? Hmm. What the heck is in here? Hmm. Well, looky there! <laughs> I'm going to bed. The hell with this. We've made enough videos today. I think when I they got my when I got my hair cut, I lost my mind. All right, before I call it a night, <laughs> before I call it a night, how am I going to do this? I am going to attempt, I haven't done this in a long time, I should probably do a practice one first. We're going to take some plastic gauge, which is this wax. We're going to tear off a little piece. And we're going to search for the piece of wax. There's a little wax wire type rod in here. <laughs> well, there's supposed to be a little wax wire in there. You know, I think... I think I'm... Is it in door number one? There! There's a piece, door number two. See, I told you. I knew it was there. <laughs> this night is going to shit in a hurry. Okay. So you set it across the bearing journal. I gotta get some oil in that thing. Okay. Then you want to take your connecting rod and make sure it's clean. And get your surfaces all nice. God, these are nice looking bearings. Kupelschmidt. Sounds German, you know. That's gotta that's gotta be worth a little bit right there, huh? Alright, so you've got numbers on the side of your connecting rod. Make sure you get those on correctly. Alright. So now we're going to try not to screw up that. This ain't going to work. I'm too tired. The day's starting to turn to poop. Got to get my connecting, my uh, connecting, my torque wrench. These go to 20 foot pounds. I'm just going to snug it down with this. This would be a lot easier if there was two people on a lot of this stuff. Take a plastic wood handled mallet. people don't show this part. Yeah, where's my freaking... Hey, it's there! Son of a biscuit. Okay. <laughs> so now, you take your paper and you find one the same width, which is just like that, and then you read on it, and it says .051. So I've got myself a half a thousandth. 
because this, uh, oh, each of these colored types of papers, so this is from one to three thousandths of an inch. So I've got myself 051 millimeter. How about going to the thousand side? I've got between one and a half and two thousandths. 1.5.002. I've got like one and a half thousandths clearance on that rod bearing. So now, we just take it off. It's just wax. I'll take some uh, brake cleaner. <laughs> put, it, put your eye right there, close to where you're working, and take the wax off. Alright, now, repeat that with each one. Okay, you got that? Now I'm gonna slobber a little bit of a little bit of oil on there. Because it's gonna sit overnight. Actually, probably put a little more and actually mount that bearing, that connecting rod on there. Now a lot of uh, connecting rods have Uh, a little dimple on the Volkswagen to show you which side goes up. These do not. And that is first one on the crank side. So that one goes to looking at that one, it's on the right. This one goes on the right here. We're going to put a little oil in here as well. Alright, so now got to match up our cap. <laughs> I am exhausted. We do this because we enjoy it. Was that the rumor? We love doing this. I guess it's just the the pride of after when you when you get it all done. I'm gonna make sure I did that right. I'm gonna look at another connecting rod. Okay, the tabs go down. I got this on upside down, guys. This is a sure sign. I should call it a night. But I am just kind of excited that all of this is finally coming together. How else are you supposed to get this thing apart, huh? Oh, it's a nice fit. Oh, and then there the bearing came off. Isn't that nice? Why did that happen? Better figure out why, buddy. Screw up your bearing, spin a bearing, and... Oh, boy. For mocking up, it'd be nice to have an old set of bearings. Alright, so one at a time, I'm taking these uh, connecting rods and I'm leaving the coating on. I'm setting the tab into the groove. I'm pushing down. Don't push down in here. You can, you can deform it. Then I've got a wooden workbench here and I find that it's working real nice to just set it up there and push it into position. It's going to stick up a little bit because there's a crush factor. Then get you a nice clean cloth. 
your high school flannel shirt or something. You can use some of that uh, white scotch bright to clean your bearings before you assemble them. Now, on a Volkswagen engine you always have a little tab on top but you'll notice that we're in that tab is always opposite the slots and when you get a, a different brand like this these have a little dimple on the side to say well where do I put it towards the flywheel or away from it it just make sure that you have on this particular case the numbers up the tab down and you have your rods in sequence properly so that it's pointing in the right direction I don't know if that'll help you I got some of this white scotch bright this is the first time I'm using this on a build and it looks so much nicer than just wiping it with the cloth but if you don't have any of this you can get by with that okay Kubelschmidt bearings from Germany. They cost a little bit more. We'll see if it's worth it. Kubelschmidt. Again, set it. Don't be bending and prying and poking and dropping and so forth. And Get them as close as you can and push the ends in. You know, here's another point. Look at my hands. You see they're oily, but they're not dirty. They're not greasy. I remember my old high school shop teacher, uh, Mr. Hartmeister. He told us that uh, when you're building an engine, you should walk away clean. He had a, a little closed off part of his garage at home where he used to build engines before he was teaching uh, there at the school. And it had, the walls were painted white, he had a stereo. I, th I don't know if he had music in there too. Seems to me he had an 8-track stereo. That was the bomb back then. 8-tracks. And uh, he said, you walk in and out of that room nice and clean. When you're building an engine, you got to be totally conscious of contamination. He had filtered fan and air conditioning of some kind. He had a nice little setup there. I'll use motor oil or this uh, synthetic stuff, doesn't matter. Just for my assembly. I don't use that greasy old assembly lube, never did. Said in the books not to, so I didn't. And uh, there you go. So. This one goes to the right. Then I'm going to lubricate my bolts. And this is for a mock-up. So don't get too excited with me. Okay, guys. I got the oil galley plugs in with red Loctite. I've got my bearings installed on my connecting rods. I've got my rods positioned the way they're supposed to be. I've got everything lubed up. Uh, I'm going for the trial fit with the steel on steel straight cut cam gear. I've got this main bearing taped and I'm gonna call it a night. I'm tired and I didn't think I'd get this far. This isn't the final stage of this. Uh, I haven't done the final torquing on these but it's good enough to start with my mock-up. Well, every time you tighten one of these bolts fully, you stretch it. So I've only gone to like 15 pounds, enough to hold it in place. I did plastic gauge uh, a couple of the connecting rods. I didn't do all four of them. It's a pain in the neck to do. They looked right on the money. So uh, about one and a half thousandths, I believe it was. So I'm going to check the book and see what that calls it. So I'm going to call this a wrap. Oh, it was a fun night and a long day. Glad I'm actually being able to proceed with the, with the build.
got my center main bearing in. I've got uh, my bearings prepped. I'm happy. Looks good. But this is just going to be too much to put in one long video, so I'll probably chop it up and post this up on uh, Easter weekend. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy, out. Boy, I am out. I'm tired.